Hi, this is Victor from Quixel. Today we'll be covering the new Quixel Suite 2.0. I'll show you Endo Painter, Dedo Painter, and the GPU Baker. So let's get started. The Suite is a high quality texturing toolset built by artists for artists. It's a fun and super fast workflow entirely in Photoshop for painting PBR textures and normals, and it's an industry standard used by tens of thousands of artists. Let's kick things off by uncovering Endo Painter. Endo lets you use all tools in Photoshop to create advanced normals super quickly. You can use it to create tileable designs from scratch, convert photos to rich normals, or to quickly add details to already existing normal maps. Let's have a look at using some of the most basic Endo features to detail an already existing normal map and mesh. Before we get started with detailing the normal map, we need to specify the mesh, as well as our baked normal. This will allow us to see the changes made in real time in 3D, the 3D previewer that ships with the suite. Next, click Create New Project and we're ready. The first thing I want to do is add some sort of ventilation to the back of the main engine part. Endo allows you to use any tool in Photoshop to create normals. This means I can use shapes, paths, selections, brush strokes, photographs, text and so on to quickly create normal details fully non-destructively. This is the area I want to add the vent to. I'll go ahead and select the shape tool and set it to a rounded rectangle shape, which will be the base shape for our event. Let's close down 3D for now and work on the normal map. By creating a new sculpt layer, the shape will be converted to a normal automatically. So all I need to get this normal detail is to drag out the shape, and do will do the rest. I'll rotate it slightly to align better with the details. And I'll use the smudge tool to skew it slightly so that it matches the baked normals. Let's set the bevel type to groove for a slightly richer bevel. Before moving on, I'll zip the layer to both save space and get better performance. This is a completely non-destructive action and you can unzip at any time. Next, I'll use the marquee selection tool to create the actual venting holes. I'll duplicate it up a couple of times and place it correctly. I'm doing this by simply selecting and alt-dragging. Now, let's convert it. By hovering over the undo UI, you'll be presented with the option to convert the active layer to a normal. For this normal detail, I want the slant to be set to in to make it look like a hole. I'll also increase the smoothness of it by using the smooth slider. I want to go back and edit this layer some more. A simple trick is to go into sculpt mode. You can enter this mode at any time to directly edit your source layer. I used the brush tool this time to paint a few more holes in the same layer. This will use the previously created layer's settings, and just like shown before, anything added in a sculpt layer is instantly converted to a normal. Once I'm done, I'll exit sculpt mode. This will also automatically zip it, which increases performance and reduces the file size. Even though there's a rather nice amount of details in the model, there are a few areas that I feel could be a bit more interesting, such as the back of the roof and the small wing. The quickest and easiest way to fix this would be to use a photo to generate some nice surface details from. Before we do that, let's check out the additions we've made to the normal in 3D. Click the refresh button in the Endo UI. That looks good. So to get started with the photo normal, all I need is a photo. I'll place this in the document. Next, I'll just place it where I want it and do a rough cutout for the areas. To see where the underlying details are, I'll reduce the opacity of the photo slightly. I'm using the polygonal lasso tool to make the selections. Once I have the selection, I invert it and just erase it. There we go. I'll do the same thing for the other area as well, and then we're ready to move on. Once done, I'll convert the photo to a normal. This will present me with the common settings that we saw before. Just click the convert button and we're ready. By adjusting these settings, you can achieve some very interesting results with very little effort. I'm simply adjusting the size and falloff to make it a bit more subtle. I'm not going for anything over the top, so this'll do. Let's change the blending mode to overlay so that it lets through the underlying shapes. Let's also reduce the opacity to about half as well. Alright, let's take a look at the new detail in 3D. That looks good, I'm happy with that. Before moving on, let's zip this detail as well to keep things tidy. Another feature in Endo Painter are the multi-normals. 
Multinormals is a very powerful feature of Endo that allows you to quickly add lots of details with different parameters without having to go back and forth between normal groups. You can use a wide variety of different Photoshop layer types in conjunction with Multinormals, such as hand-painted layers, with which you can create instant hand-painted normals using the brush or pencil tools. You can also use Photoshop's vector tools, such as a shape and pen tool, to create normals. Multinormals also allow you to convert text to normals instantly with the possibility of changing the text, font and size at any time. Probably the coolest thing about Multinormals is that it opens up for 3D painting, allowing you to paint and sculpt normal details directly onto your mesh in 3D. Simply check the paint checkbox to get started. What I want to do is create a detail on the small wings, so let's use the already created Multinormal and paint using that. Painting mode allows us to use several different brushes to achieve different details. You'll notice that there's an active tab called Painting available when you're in the paint mode. Here you can access a wide array of options and settings related to painting. For this detail, I'll go ahead and use a simple hard round brush. By holding down B and the right mouse button, I can adjust the dimensions of the brush. And just like in Photoshop, I can use Shift to get straight strokes between the previous and the current stroke. I'll use this technique to get the panel design I'm after. To preview the normal you've painted, press Shift and Space. In order to preview without the mask overlay, press and hold N as in normal. Let's try out a couple more layer types within the same multi-normal to further detail the wing. I'll create some text that goes along the front of the wing. Simply choose the text tool and start typing. It'll automatically be converted into a normal. You can change text at any time as it's completely non-destructive. Next, I'll add a small rounded detail between the hinges by using the shape tool, which is a vector type. Alright, let's preview the changes. Let's open up 3do and refresh. Right, so these are the changes I wanted to make to the normal, and I feel really happy about it now. Let's save it and move on to texturing it with Dido Painter. Dido is a PBR texture painting tool right inside Photoshop that enables you to create final textures extremely quickly. It really is one of the most artistic and high quality workflows out there. Let's take a look at texturing our speeder using Dido. The first thing you'll see when launching Dido Painter is the base creator. This is where you set up your project by hooking up your mesh and map inputs. I'll quick load my inputs by selecting any one of them. This hooks up all the inputs automatically, provided they follow a common naming convention. I'll use the GPU baker to bake the object space normal, curvature and position gradient maps. Next, I'll set the resolution to 4K. You can upscale the resolution at any time, and Dido supports painting in 8K. I'll be using this asset in Unreal Engine 4, so I'll set the export target to UE4. This will ensure my texture and shader setups follow the exact same standard as Unreal. Alright, we're all set. Let's click Create. During the project generation, the GPU baker will bake the maps we asked it to. Dido will set up the project files next. Ok, let's get started. For this project, we've started with a clean slate. Let's start building some material definition. Dido ships with a large amount of physically based scans and smart materials. Smart materials are multi-layered textures with dynamic weathering that react to the shape of your mesh. I'll add one right away. First, let's open the material browser. There's a huge amount of high quality presets to get you started. I'm looking for a worn painted metal. I'll try this one. I'm pretty happy with this, but I want to customize it a bit. First, I'll tweak the roughness of the layer to make it a bit glossier. Now, let's try creating a custom sun bleach effect on the paint. First, I'll add a new clean layer. By holding control, the blending mode will automatically be set to overlay. Next, I'll make it slightly yellow. Lastly, I want to create a dynamic weathering mask. Let's see if there's a preset we can start from. I'll load this one. This works, we just need to adjust the tightness slightly. Ok, perfect. Let's accept these new settings. Next, let's do some color hand painting. The painter is a powerful feature that allows you to paint anything at any time across all maps. Let's start out with something simple, like painting out some color highlights. I'm working at a low opacity to get a more dynamic buildup of my strokes. I'll also add some darker reds. 
This lets me add some more depth to the crevices of the engine. By pressing M, as in mask, I can preview the strokes more clearly. When done, simply exit the color painter and everything will be baked into your PSD. Finally, let's mask this material with an ID. Hold the C key to show the ID map and click the desired part. Now, let's add a smart material directly by clicking on an ID. Hold the C and shift keys. And let's add a metal. Next, let's create some oily grime in the crevices. First, I'll load a single surface scan. I'll use a coarse rust as a base. Next, let's design the Dynamask. I'll choose a preset. This time, let's enter the advanced settings for extra tweaking control. I'll increase the tightness of the AO influence. I also think it would look cool with some grime on the front caps. I'll do this by painting directly on the mesh. You can always paint straight in the Dynamask. I'll select a grunge brush and start painting. The sweet chips with over 500 scan based high resolution brushes. Painting and brush settings behave just like in Photoshop. There are also many additional cool painting features that are unlocked by using the suite. And I can also tweak any material properties non destructively while I paint. There we go. Let's accept the mask. Great, we're almost there now. Just a few more things we need to add. As a final material, let's add some leather to the seat. I will shift C click the seat to open the material browser. This should be a good one. Let's add it. I want to add it to the outer part of the seat as well. Let's select the leather group. Now hold C and the control keys to add another ID to it. Lastly, I want some material separation between the two, while still keeping the material type. A simple trick is to add a new overlay layer. Change the color. And link it to the outer part of the seat. Perfect, I'm happy with that. Alright, it's time to set up a quick presentation in 3Do. 3Do is a powerful, physically based renderer and it comes with a wide range of camera post processes for presentation. Let's try a post process preset. I'll increase the size of 3Do to get a better view. Let's render this and take a look at it. Ok, I'm pretty much done with the render, but I'm missing some final texture details. Let's create a color paint layer and quickly add some suit around the engine, directly on the final render. I'll find a brush with some nice directionality going on. This one looks good. Let's keep the opacity low for some nicer dynamics. Ok, something like that. Just one final detail, let's add some nice roughness variation as well. Some sort of fluid on the side of the engine. That looks good. Let's bring it up to full screen to take a look at it. Let's do another render. Ok, I'm calling this one done. All in all, the texturing of this asset took me about 7 minutes. Using a manual texturing workflow, this would have taken me at least a workday to complete. We've only just begun to scratch the surface of what you can do with the new suite. It's one of the fastest, most artistic and high quality texturing workflows out there. And over the next few videos, we'll be covering each major new feature in depth. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.